Hey, thanks for joining me. This is just a quick little video to put out some up-to-date information on influenza. Last Monday, Dr. Gwen, who, who's already out of the office for the weekend, and I had done a video talking specifically about influenza and a little bit about this year's influenza. I wanted to update that by giving you some information that the CDC has put out on their website. The reason I'm doing it now is because it's something I can get done just before I head out for the weekend, but also because the CDC renews their data every Friday. And so the information we have, the most updated information you can have is one week old. And right now it was released for the information on January 11th for the status of influenza. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So first of all, there's the map. And the map is showing the United States. And you can see that we have activity for influenza not only activity, but widespread activity in most states. Um, you know, you see Oregon there, obviously, but also it's a little harder to see that Hawaii and the Virgin Islands and the District of Columbia don't have as much activity as Oregon. But, or I mean, sorry, you know, not as much as Oregon, but as much as the rest of the country. We have a lot of influenza going on. Influenza like illnesses, influenza uh, diagnosed by testing, influenza deaths. It's not quite to the point that they call it uh, more than usual yet, but we're on the verge of it. Um, if it doesn't decline, we're going to see an awful lot of stuff from influenza, both deaths and hospitalizations coming up very shortly. Let me go back to some other information. Now, something I really wanted to emphasize about this is that the vaccine, when we talked about last time, we were, we kind of downplayed the efficacy of the vaccine. Uh, it actually matches up very well. And that's something I had to do some research. I, I went through these inserts that come, come with our, our flu vaccines, the boxes. And I had to go through all this fine print that you see here to finally find that it actually does cover the bugs we're talking about, the, the strains of influenza. So here is the information from the CDC about the strains of influenza. What you see there is the testing and the, they say when they're testing it. Of course, now that we're done with week two of, well, last week we're done with week two of this year, uh, it shows the number of specimens collected. And then it shows the breakdown of influenza A and influenza B. Those are the two large categories of the positive specimens. And so you see that under influenza A, it's about half of them and then influenza B, it's about half of them. So 50-50, or nearly so, influenza A and influenza B. This is a little unusual. Usually it's a lot more influenza A. And so that's why when you get a flu vaccine, in the old days when they had the triple valent or the trivalent, it would be three strains of influenza, two A and one B. And the way that they get these is they look at what's going on around the world where influenza is spreading the Southern Hemisphere quite often. In fact, this time it's Australia that our strains are from to see what the threats are. And usually they'll get two of influenza A and one of influenza B. Again, because influenza A is usually the more prevalent one. This is unusual that we have 50-50 with A and B. Those of you who get the quadrivalent vaccine, uh, that is the... Flu, let me get the name off of the paper here, or at least the one that we have, uh, Flu Zone from Sanofi Pasteur, the Flu Zone Quadrivalent. That one actually covers all four that you, I'm going to show it to you again here. All four of the strains that you see in this graphic, under influenza A, you have H1N1, and you have H3N2, and then under B, you have the Yamagata and the Victoria. Those are all co covered by the flu, uh, flu zone that Sanofi put out. That's the one that we use. So we're kind of happy that it does match up very nicely. And then the other one is the uh, one that's used for people who are older than 65. Well, people older than 65, we give them a three or four times the strength in their vaccine to make them get a better immune response to it. And we have a lot of studies showing that they do get a better immune response when you give them a higher dose of the vaccine. And they cover those top three strains, 2A and 1B. The B that they cover, I'll show you the graphic again. The B that they cover is the Victoria lineage. The one that you see there that's 98.8% 
of all of the influenza B. So we have really good coverage in the vaccines that are out there being used for what we're seeing come through, at least for the second week, which ended on January 11th. Now I'm gonna to try to see if I can find your comments and questions. I know that this was an unannounced video, so I don't know how many of our regulars will be out there. Let me pull you up on my phone so that I can respond to your comments and questions. Okay, so your comments and questions. Live chat. Actually, we have very little right now. So uh, go ahead and comment on the video after. I know I didn't announce it ahead of time, so that's why very few people are able to join us that usually would participate in the chat. But please do put your comments in the comment section or if you have questions and do continue. If you wish that you could have caught this when it was live, the way you can do that is to be subscribed and then hit that little bell icon next to the subscription and then you'll be able to get announcements and configure your device to get the notifications to see us when we go live on timely subjects like this. This time influenza ending the second week of the year on January 11th, even though now it's the 17th because the data is a week late. Thanks as usual. Until next time, Dr. Vaughn telling you to stay in good health.